Hello, this is Andrew Fake from Minds and Money. Delighted to be joined with us today by Karam Yusumez, President and CEO of Metalem Resources. Delighted to go and meet you again. I'm uh, very pleased to meet you again as well, and it's a pl always a pleasure. Good, good, good. Well, let's kind of like start off. Um, for, for our viewers who are not familiar with Metalem Resources, can you give us a quick overview about the company? Yes, absolutely. Um, our company, Metallum Resources, is a new base metal company that is listed on the TSX, Toronto Stock Exchange, under the symbol MZN. And our flagship project is uh, Superior Lake Project, which has the former producing Winston Mine in Ontario. Um, great location, very close to all the infrastructure. And um, it was closed, the Winston mine was closed at the end of the 90s after 10 years of highly profitable production, but it was closed due to low prices, low zinc prices. Now that the zinc prices are high and expected to remain high, we are looking at reopening the mine. And uh, we have a great management team with history of discoveries, building mines and companies and creating shareholder value multiple times. So yeah, we're very excited about, uh, about Metal. A couple of obvious questions. If the project was so good, how come, you, how come it was sold to you? Surely the original owners would have wanted to have kept uh, ownership of it. Absolutely, no, that's a great question. That was one of the questions I've asked before I came into the picture as well. Um, well, basically it was owned by an Australian company, Australian listed company called Superior Lake Resources. They wanted, um, they wanted a Canadian management team, Canadian um, partner to move this forward. It was getting more difficult for them to basically manage it from Australia, especially when COVID hit. So when we started talking um, about a JV or potential partnership, it, it, it became more of an acquisition, like an RTO basically at the time. So uh, they're very supportive and um, the shares are tightly held basically because they uh, own majority of ours, our company, but uh, they're very supportive and they did a tremendous work, great work for us to, you know, take the flag and uh, carry it towards production. Mm -hmm. um, you also talked earlier about your management team's experience. Can you just go into a little more depth? I mean, maybe like, so if, what's your background? Absolutely. I'm a geological engineer. I uh, have more than 20 years of uh, a lot of exploration as well as uh, development, mine development experience uh, within Canada, across Canada, as well as globally. I have a rock mechanics engineering um, technical background as well. Um, apart from me, we have our, our chairman who founded the company, Simon Ridgway. He's done many discoveries and uh, he, he was the founder of Fortuna Silver and build that company um, from uh, scratch. We have a very good geological team. Uh, Andrew Teams uh, is the local uh, Thunder Bay person, um, our geologist that leads our uh, exploration efforts. But on the development side, we have David Lang, our um, advisor who built mines in Africa, as well as Mark Cruz, who built Trevally Mining um, at his early days from exploration to becoming 1.5 billion dollar company, um, zinc company with four mines uh, around the world, and uh, and and very strong board as well with technical and uh, and governance side of things. Mm -hmm. um, you've mentioned the geology of the project before. Can you just tell us a little bit about the geology of the project for those that are unfamiliar with the region? Absolutely. So the location is very favorable. It's on Ontario. It's near Thunder Bay, which, which is one of the biggest mining hubs in Canada, it just east of Thunder Bay. So there's a Trans-Canada Highway, which connects from east, Eastern Canada to Western Canada. It's the main Trans-Canada, main Canada, main highway in Canada. So we're just 20 kilometers off of that highway. So very easy access for transport. Um, there's a well-maintained road from the main Trans-Canada Highway to our project, 20 kilometers, uh, year-round road. But it's also, there's a 27 kilometers from that gate, mine gate, um, there's a railway station that connects, again, Eastern to Western Canada, which gives us a very good access um, potential to smelters and transport routes. There's a port in Thunder Bay, 
which we can also ship to Europe if we wanted to, but the railway or the Trans-Canada Highway will connect us to uh, Vancouver or Montreal also. So that's the location advantage. The geology is it's a VMS deposit. This whole mining camp from pretty much uh, Sault Ste. Marie or Wawa area to Thunder Bay, very rich, highly underexplored um, area. But this, we are located in the VMS camp, um, which, which happens to be those kind of deposits, the base metal deposits come in lenses and they pinch and swell. And um, depending on the age, uh, they're usually, they usually come in four to six horizons um, lenses, which to this date, only two has been discovered. And what's interesting is those two are in different ages. So there's more to be found. We have a lot of smoke in the area that have never been drilled that we need to follow up on. So in a nutshell, it has a very good potential, but it's al already one of the highest grade zinc deposits in the world and uh, definitely the highest grade in North America that's under development at this stage in the Lausanne curve. You said earlier that um, you were quite uh, optimistic or, or like other people in the industry were quite optimistic about the price of zinc continuing to either stay strong or increase. For those of us who are a little bit unfamiliar about the supply demand dynamics of zinc, why do you believe there is such a strong demand for zinc at the moment? Yeah, so zinc is the um, fourth mostly commonly used uh, uh, metal in the world. Uh, it historically, or currently as well, more than half of it has been used for strengthening the metal, uh, galvanizing. And so that means infrastructure as well as automotive. Those are the main industries. However, with the new developments in the green economy, green conver conversion economy, low carbon economy, there is some really, really good use of zinc, zinc air batteries, but also the, the zinc storage, um, which is getting traction because it's easy to transport. It's not uh, toxic or combustive. So that gives a lot of advantages on that front. It's cheap and uh, stores a lot of energy compared to others. So currently what's happening with zinc under the radar is because it's uh, overshadowed from copper and, and other uh, more attractive um, uh, metals. It's uh, that zinc smelters um, have closed uh, or reduced their production in Europe, which, which, which had a major impact on zinc. And uh, I was in, in London during the LME week and a couple of, uh, well, the main consensus of zinc was that zinc stocks are low uh, around the world and the demand is growing. So we basically, we need 5 million tons more in the next five to seven years, but most probable mines can only produce 3.5 in the years to come. So there will be deficit in the next five to seven years. So we think it's the best time that's why it makes our project even more attractive at this moment. Mm -hmm. um, changing tack, what are Metalim's ESG credentials? That's a very good point. So um, Metalim is a part of Gold Group. Gold Group is, you know, it's the companies that were formed under Simon Ridgeway. We have projects in other companies in Guatemala, in Mexico, and, and uh, Yukon, and now Africa as well. But all over those projects, when you look at it, ESG has been the main focus on the governance, environmental, and social impacts. What we have done so far, remember, we just started this company in April, six, seven months ago. But what our first impact, our first line of action was reach out to local communities, the First Nation communities, as well as the local um, Schreiber and Thunder Bay areas. We started the communication. We wanted to meet with them. Uh, obviously, there was a little challenge at the beginning with COVID, but as time passed, we were able to meet in person and so forth. But we've so far, we've built a very good relationship. We've done an exploration campaign, used exclusively local uh, workforce and contractors, including First Nations owned and operated drilling company and uh, environmental. Even currently, what we are doing with the environmental monitoring and everything is all First Nations communities. Um, that's on the social impacts, and we will continue to do so. On the environmental side, since we didn't do a lot of work, but what we're looking at right now is going 
carbon neutral. So we benefit as, as being in Ontario in, the, in that region. 96, 97% of electricity is produced from non-carbon emitting sources. So that gives us an advantage already if we go down the carbon neutral credits routes. Um, but apart from that, what we want to do is we want to build solar and potentially wind. Solar makes more sense at this point on the camp. Uh, we're looking at that and um, definitely carbon neutral operation. That's what we're, we're moving forward uh, with. On the other side of the, um, the governance, we're looking at adding um, more diversity on our gender um, in the management. It's a bit of a challenge, but we are, we are working towards that. Um, we had the visible um, minority uh, field crew as well, so mm -hmm. far. Um, and one sort of final question, looking forward to 2022, um, if people listening in were to then invest into metal and resources, what sort of, uh, what's on the horizon in 2022? What sort of like, um, can they sort of expect to hear from you in terms of announcements and sort of plans coming up? Absolutely. So our main focus right now is to reopen the mine as we have. So we benefit basically we published our feasibility study a month ago in October. So that gave very robust economic numbers and very close uh, timeline to production with very, very profitable operation for about nine years. Um, but what we are looking at is we have a bunch of um, permits in place already and a few others are in the process. We're looking at having the dewatering permit fully, permit to take water and dewatering permit early in the new year. So we could start dewatering in the second quarter of the new year. As soon as we do that, that's for advanced exploration, meaning going underground. As soon as we do that, we're going to apply for the production permit, which we don't expect anything major because we have all the infrastructure. This project has tailings dam, underground development right to the ore, 16 kilometers with main shafts and everything else. There's polishing ponds, there's transformer on site. So very, very easy. Um, that, that takes away a lot of burden on the capital investment as well as timelines. So we're looking at uh, working towards that in the new year. So lots going on. We're doing the environmental stuff at this moment. So if we get those permits, um, you'll see a lot of progress in the new year, starting with dewatering. Uh, so that's very exciting for us. Well, um, excellent to hear. We do really wish you uh, all the best for 2022. That was Karam Yusumez, President and CEO of Metalam Resources with Andrew Thake from Minds and Money. Thank you very much.